Okay. Thank you very much to be here. Uh, I'm. Hello. No break. Break is after my talk. <laughs> Just half an hour passing more. Um, I'm a Docker captain. I'm in, I'm involved in, in the community with different uh, in different way. Um, I'm also uh, I work in Influx Data. It's a company that provides InfluxDB uh, and the uh, entire stack that you can use to build your own um, monitoring tools, monitoring system. And some months ago, we decided to put together a use case that was useful to understand how pow powerful our stack can be uh, with Docker itself. And like we struggled about what was going to be an interesting use case for the community. And we bring up uh, an auto-scaling um, project. Because as you probably know, uh, a lot of, like, not a lot of years ago, but a while ago, um, some big players called it AWS, or before them, other players just started to give us a lot of servers and a lot of capability, um, easy to use. We are, like, all of us are really comfortable to start new servers and to um, scale application around the world. And if you think about when before AWS or like when all this kind of powerful was not available, um, we was writing application in a really different way. And what happened now is like that sometimes for some specific use case, not for databases usually, but if you if we think about front end API or actually front end um, kind of site, we can think about make the server, um, allow server to do our work without care that much because uh, if we're going to have a lot of traffic, we can spin up new containers or spin up, spin up new servers. If we're going to have less, less traffic, we can just bring down servers. And all the ecosystem is following us in, our, in this kind of pattern. If you think about um, serverless, it's really the exponential, like, um, case because we are just running function, doesn't matter how many times people are going to use that function, we are just going to run that function all the times. And we put together this use case that um, I call Orbiter, and it's a really tiny Go application, and I'm going to speak like a little bit about all the history. Um, there are just 32 commits, but a lot of like uh, brain involved in all the commits. <laughs> Not always really good br brain, but you know, that's what, what happened. Um, like, I'm going to use the whiteboard because I asked for to have a whiteboard. Like, if you think about your cluster, you have like all your servers and you have your application inside. This is your application. And usually, if you are like, good or if you care about your application, you have here uh, a monitor. It's a monitoring system that is usually listening to some metrics. Can be metrics from the server, like he's getting metrics like CPU or memory or, um, I don't know, network, networking, how, much, how is um, your cluster behave? And if you are also really, really smart and really good, you can also take information from your application because like your application speaks really well. Uh, he tells you how many login you are handling or how many errors you are getting, how long a request is. is. Uh, if your requests are increasing, probably you are out of load and you need to have more capabilities. For some, if you think about the API, um, they are just a layer on top of some databases. It means that if your database is good, uh, you can spin up more APIs. It's going to be good. And if we think about this in, uh, in this way, we are also comfortable to like, leave free our servers to spin up a new application during the night because it's really comfortable to leave um, our like leave these kind of tasks to an automation tools and we can stay 
you can sleep without care that much. And to do that, you need two other actors. You need something, an autoscaler, uh, let's say ape, <laughs> out, a, oops, a, oh. um, an autoscaler that is waiting for something. It can wait for a new event like your servers is using a lot of CPU and your requests now are really slow. Can I, what I can do? And you can get this information from your monitoring tools. And how can you do that? You need another like tiny application that is listening on that, on that matrix and is doing like something, is doing something for you. Um, in, in influx data, we have this kind of solution. We have a monitor, a monitoring database that is called InfluxDB. But you can use Prometheus if you like, or Graphite, Prometheus, or Graphite, or like if you have already a monitoring system, it's fine. Um, if you need, a, you need a way to listen to your application, understand what's happening, and trigger something. And to do that, we use Capacitor. That is an application written in Go that is listening on InfluxDB. InfluxDB has a um, feature called long, um, continuous query. That is like you can write a query that is listening on a specific matrix, and you can say, OK, uh, we are not in the common range. Like Usually, to be safe, you need to have a CPU lower than 60%. Let's say that. And you can create a continuous, uh, continuous query that is saying if it's going to, if it's going up to 70%, just trigger an alert. And there are different kinds of alerts. What uh, I'm using in Orbiter is a really simple POST, um, HTTP POST, POST, HTTP POST, and on the autoscaler. The autoscaler is the tiny guy that is handling the request and is doing something. In this case, is um, tasking Docker Swarm to increase the number of tasks that are currently running. That, that's, the, that's the main idea. And what we are covering with Orbiter is just this little um, functionality. Uh, all the other actors are on top of you. Um, this, use, this kind of use case is really great with con if you are using containers because we know that one of the main features in containers is the limitation, resource limitation. Uh, it means that when we run a container, we can say um, if, it, if, it's going, if it's working too much and uh, it's using two CPU or two memories, you can just destroy the container. And in our case, Docker Swarm is going to match the gap. If one container is going down for some reason, SwarmKit is the application that is bringing up a new container because one of the capabilities is match the desired state that we declare with what we have in our cluster. And that capability, that this reconciliation uh, help, helped me a lot when I was designing this autoscaler because uh, was something that I, I like, was already done. <laughs> And just to come back on this feature, this application, uh, it works in two different ways because like when I started, the idea was to create a general autoscaler. Um, AWS has an autoscaler. Um, Kubernetes has an autoscaler. Um, recently, they had the support for custom metrics. Before, it was just for some kind of metrics. Um, Everything needs an autoscaler. That's it. That's why we build it. Uh, I built this. And it means that I started with a really verbose configuration, YAML configuration, that was really hard to like maintain after two hours that I wrote it. And like that, that's the, the idea. And the autoscalers works with uh, we can declare autoscaling group. In my case, for example, events and infrascale was two. Um, two of them, 
it supports different providers. As I said, one is DigitalOcean right now, and the other one is Worm. And you can declare the application that are using uh, that provider. For example, in, uh, in, Swarm, in the Swarm concept, concept uh, is a service. And in, in my example, events is the autoscaling group, and PHP is the name of the service in uh, Swarm. And up and down is how many containers I need to spin up when I receive a uh, app event, uh, how many containers I need to, spin, uh, to stop when I receive a down um, event. It means that if you're going out of capacity, I need to update my, uh, the number of containers. If, I'm, if I have less traffic, I need, to down, uh, I need to spin down some containers. And like, after some tests, I realized it was not really easy to use. And like, I, we still need to use this kind of configuration for uh, DigitalOcean at the moment, because I didn't figure out how to do this in a different way. But for Docker Swarm, uh, after some chat with some uh, folks in the community, we landed with a better kind of agreement <laughs> with uh, Orbiter and Docker Swarm. Um, we implemented a method called auto-detect. And what, what it, uh, how it works, it uses labels. Uh, if you work with Do Docker, you probably know that everything has a label and you can attach label to pretty much anything. Uh, everything, you can, have, you can attach lab, uh, label to secrets or to service. In this case, I'm using, I'm creating a new service and I'm using the service attached, the label attached to a specific service. Um, and if you, when you create a service with that, that command, uh, if you attach Orbit, uh, a label orbiter equals true. Um, orbiter is going to understand that it needs to manage that service. Um, there are other two labels that you can use, orbiter uh, up and orbiter down to like uh, configure orbiter to with the right um, tasks to add or delete. And this like this name is the is the combination of the auto scaling group that we saw here infrascale and the, the policy front end uh, in my in for the auto detection i'm using a kind of uh, auto detect swarm to say that these specific service come from Swarm, and the web is the name of the service, the, the service itself. Now, let's, let's say that like, you have your service up and running, and uh, you have your monitoring system that is getting information from uh, your containers and your environment, and you need to scale up and down. Uh, what you need to do, you have a two choice right now. Um, you can use a post to, like, with the direction. Direction true is up, direction false is down. And, uh, or you can just use the same kind of syntax. The, the ape is a, like, JSON API, and uh, the, entry point, the entry point is uh, slash handle, slash the name of the autoscaler, slash the name of the policy. It means that in our example over here, we are going to call um, handle slash auto detect swarm slash web and slash up or, or slash down. Uh, like how, mm, like we took this kind of solution because it's already scaling because we are using the uh, storage that Docker, Docker Swarm provide Docker Swarm provide kind of distributed storage to save the state of your services. And it means that from the orbital point of view, the application is stateless because it's just looking into the information that Docker provide, that Docker have. 
another kind of idea that comes to our mind um, when we was working on that is the embeddable features. Um, the API is really, really simple. I, I'm, I'm speaking about the Go API, like the function that I, I'm using into the code. It's very simple and you can in practice use Orbiter has a library for your tools. Um, I link it into this, uh, into the readme. Uh, Kelsey Hightower talks about the idea that in the future, a possible idea that in the future all the application will manage the um, operational part by themselves. Uh, if you think about how we are building application, um, now our application serves some information that years ago we was not really caring about. Like the health check is something that we had that when uh, the, we started to have more than one instance of, of our application running because we was, we was looking for a way to figure out if our application was working or not. And maybe in the future can be something good. I'm, that can be something that has sense. I'm still thinking about the, this, this kind of idea because I'm not 100% sure that you know, you're, we are going to make your application really powerful in terms of operation and I'm not sure if it's safe enough, uh, but it, it's a street that we can take. Um, yeah, the, the idea when you use Orbiter with Docker is that you just need to spin up a container in your Docker Swarm uh, in this case, I'm using the run command, but you can use the service creation. Um, like you can create a, servi uh, a service, uh, and you just need to expose it's running on port 8000, 8, and it's waiting for your requests. Now, I'm going to show you uh, a little bit of context about how you can build something like this with uh, the InfluxDB stack. Um, I told you before that we have three open source projects that can help you to do that. One is the InfluxDB itself, when you can take the information and store information. Another one is Telegraph, that is uh, our collector. You can install an agent in your servers, configure your um, agent to get all the information that you need. It supports different um, plugins and different services like, uh, I don't know, RabbitMQ or Nginx or, um, there are really a long list. And uh, like, let, let me show you some code that is going to be easy. For example, this is a possible config telegraph configuration that uh, you can put in your servers. You need to figure out, like, you need to put some information, like what is your InfluxDB database, and you can declare all the inputs that you need. In this case, I'm using the CPU. Uh, I'm taking disk information from my server, and uh, I'm using the Docker socket, uh, Docker Unix socket to get the information from my containers. It means that I know how many containers are running, how many images I have, the state of my containers, and all the metrics related to a specific container. I'm taking memory information and other basic system information. I also had an example of one, of, one plugin. Uh, this is how we get information from RabbitMQ. Rabbit, RabbitMQ expose um, uh, REST API to get metrics, for example, how many messages there are in queue, how many of them we are handling, or how many of them are in progress, and stuff like that. You put this configuration in your servers, you install Telegram, uh, Telegram, <laughs> Telegram in, your, in your phone, and, and you, just, you are just starting to collect data. And I, I built this, uh, this application that uh, was a test application, and the idea behind this is we have a RabbitMQ that is getting all the events, all the changes that Wikipedia is having. If someone is, go, is changing a uh, page on Wikipedia and it saves, 
uh, I'm going to save this event in RabbitMQ, and I have a bunch of workers that are uh, taking this message from my queue and are making a PDF, uh, JPEG on, um, of the diff. And this is a, a good use case because if you're going to have a lot of too many messages in your queue, you can spin up more workers. And if you're going to have like no messages, you can just stop all your workers and can be something that you can do in 100% in, in automation without uh, wake up during the night or I don't know. And let's say that you are like save, storing all this information into um, all the information related to RabbitMQ uh, into InfluxDB and you have information about the number of messages that are still impending. Uh, you can use capacitor to listen to these kind of metrics, like how many messages I need to handle, how many messages I need to handle. And if there are too many messages, you can make the famous uh, HTTP post that is saying Orbiter to spin up new servers. And this is the syntax that we that capacitor supports and like one of the um, action that capacitor can take when something is not matching the criteria is a post and what i'm doing here is just saying like make a post to my worker service and spin it up i'm going to show you the last um, like okay that that's that's good you are like um, storing all the information in InfluxDB. you have your telegraph that is like uh, pushing all the metrics um, you are your listener that your, you have your orbiter that is waiting for something uh, but you need to like be sure that you are doing the, the right things. And the, this dashboard is called Chronograph and is uh, is well integrated. Is the C in the tick stack? Uh, it's well integrated in all the ecosystem. And for example, one of the really good features that uh, I like more than others is the um, auto configuration for the dashboard. All the information like you can say that system Docker and Rabbit are the same plugin that we configure it in our Telegram configuration because Capacitor can like detect which, which kind of plugin we are using and it's going to create for us um, like fancy, fancy dashboard without do anything because uh, like we know the, com the most common graph that probably we are looking for when we use that kind of service like for example, for Docker, we have the container, the memory for all containers, or we have the number of containers that are currently uh, running the images and and the container state. Like we know which we know which of them are running, which are stopped, which are uh, not working, and we do that for a lot of plugins. In this way, you you have also like kind of. Uh, complete vision of what it's, uh, how your cluster is behaving. And that's pretty much it from my side. Um, if you have some question or some idea about how to uh, improve this kind of project, I'm happy to know. And like it's open source on GitHub, it means that you can definitely make it better and maybe you can remove some EMLs.